Hi friends, in this video, I'm going to share my best practices in true client scripting. As you are aware, the purpose of true client is to measure the end to end performance of the modern web applications. Applications which are built on AngularJS, ReactJS, etc., will have a heavy rendering on the client side. The communication between the client and the browser is very limited. Uh, it is uh, suitable for single page applications. So traditional web based HTTP HTML will not be able to measure the end to end performance of the modern web applications. In that case, you need to go for either true client or JMeter plus Selenium approach. So this video, I'm going to share how to identify the objects uniquely so that you can execute your script and maintain your script with less rework. For the demo purpose, I'm going to take a sample web application, which is built on ReactJS, which has two main functionalities, login and register. For the demo purpose, I'm going to take load down a token protocol, and we are going to see how to identify the objects uniquely using XPath. I'm using the latest version of LoadRunner, which is 2.53, and I'm going to create a new true client script. So in this demo, I'm going to use Chromium as a browser, and I'm going to record now register and login. So click on record button and enter the URL and start recording your business process. So what I have done is I just registered and I clicked on logout. So in the left side you could see. So each action has been recorded. And by default, the ID method for the objects is automatic. So if you select automatic, which is a recommended way by uh, the tool, it will work locally, but whenever you are trying to run your load test using multiple controllers, your script might fail. So if, the, if your script fails, you need to come and open your script and you need to debug whether the object has been identified or not. So I don't prefer this way of identifying the objects because for the regression, definitely it, it will not work because development team will change something in the back end. Uh, they will change the name, they'll change the ID. So everything might change, right? So the best way of identifying the objects is using XPath. So XPath is a way uh, to identify the objects uniquely using its uh, attributes. So, but you cannot use the, the typical uh, name or ID for the React JS or Angular JS like applications. So, what I'm going to propose is for each element, you need to identify how you're going to identify the objects uniquely. So, for React JS like applications, development team, what they have done is they will have a unique name and the value for each element. So in this case, for login button, it's a, it's not actually a button, it's a anchor tag. And uh, anchor tag has uh, three attributes. One is the class and href and data hyphen react ID. So for each element, so development team has given data hyphen react ID, 
which is unique for each object we are going to leverage this in two client okay so in the demo what i have done is i click on register so for the register so this is the data react id and the value so just copy this go to true client so here i am clicking on register so expand this object and change the id method to xpath so here you could see true client has automatically generated the xpath expression but this is not be useful because in the next build the index might change or there might be another register uh, text box or link so this is not a best way to identify so just delete this and add data iphone react id and the value okay so just click on highlight now the object has been identified successfully so similarly you need to identify each elements data iphone react id so this is for the username text box and this is for uh, the password and definitely there will be a data iphone react id for every element if it is not there you need to contact your development team so now once you changed the id method to xpath and if, if you just put data iphone react id definitely your script will work fine in most of the builds it will run successfully in local and it will also it will execute successfully in the flow generators and controllers so this is the best way to identify your objects for the modern web applications so i hope this video tutorial is helpful so for more such tutorials please subscribe and stay tuned thanks for watching have a great day